Plus a journalist, I'm curious. That's my job. And I'm looking around the room and I said, you know, like, this is a workplace, right? The football locker room, they work. It's a place of, it, it's an occupation. And this is the most diverse workplace that I think there is in the country, probably. And I'm just thinking, why, why do I not know more about why it's the first? And I go, like, who, is there a Jackie Robinson of the NFL? I mean, who's the first black football player in the NFL? I asked myself the question. You mentioned you're embarrassed, you didn't know? I was embarrassed, Googling it on my phone in the middle of the Giants locker room. I don't know the answer to this. And I Google and it's first black player in NFL and Kenny Washington's name comes up. I'm reading about him and I'm like, I don't know this. I'm paid to cover this sport. I should know it, but if I don't know it, I bet you most people in this country don't know it. And you go ask anybody who has heard of Jackie Robinson, they will say, of course I've heard of Jackie Robinson. Ask that same player, fan, no fan, who is Kenny Washington? Blank stare. I didn't know. I spoke to Keyshawn. I said, Keyshawn, I think, I think there's something here. He didn't know it. Now, Keyshawn grew up playing football for USC five minutes from where Kenny and Woody Strode starred in Los Angeles as, as high school kids. And he didn't know it. And he got a little angry um, as we were discussing it. And he says, you know, I, I, I'm mad that I don't know this history. So let's do it. And then and we went forward with this, with this project. And it, it lightened both of our eyes to a story that has not been told enough. And even though it is being told enough, and that was a fantastic, fantastic piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's still not known, um, and, and, and it deserves to be told. Well, let's, let's get into it. So how did you find out about the story? He's in the locker room, and he's Googling on his phone. I'm assuming your story is different. Yeah, so the Rams came to Similar to your story about Googling everything you could find, thankful for your book. Um, and it was it was eye-opening to us. We we had never heard of Jack Robinson, of course, but King Washington and Noah didn't come up in our imagination. Yeah, so no idea what we found so much right. joy um, makes me cool. researching this. We found so much strength in our own stories and knew that if we were granted this opportunity, then we should tell it and tell it right. And so thank you for the family, thank you for the Rams organization for trusting us and giving. Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, your hair is fantastic. I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the timeline between you learning about Kenny's story, making the bed, and then actually having the film done? So I really want to give the Rams another round of applause. Um, I think we all learned. Yes. And, and through Kenny's story, and their history, what type of organization they are. Um, and so, you know, they didn't want this to be, as an agency, clients, brands come to me February 1st. Hey, I got this Black History Month project, right? Um, when would you like it done? Uh, we don't have that much time, and, and the Rams were super responsible we're coming almost a year in advance to make this happen and come to life. So we thank them for that. Um, and after that, it was fast paced. Then we came out here um, September or August the first time. It was, it was still riding Super Bowl high. It was so good to get that training account, um, get that experience. And when we met them, you could tell top to bottom. The workforce, everybody, every individual we met was genuine. They was they were brought into the project. They wanted it to come to life. I'm not the bad. We reached out to a credible team, the Lloyd Visuals team out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I um, missed a team from Florida, uh, Brooklyn. A couple other members of our team couldn't be here. And decided that, hey, we have to put this together. Came out shop in November. And just been editing since. And so we're here tonight to show and share with you all and soon the world. It's an incredible project. Tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Um, Keith, yes. <laughs> you were born after your grandfather had passed away. 
Correct. And so you got a chance to learn about his legacy and his impact through the eyes of others. Exactly correct. Was there a recurring theme that helped you get a clearer picture as far as who your grandfather was? Any phrase or words that you heard over and over again when he's talked about? Oh, wow. Um, definitely the ones that have been said over and over again. Trailblazer, pioneer, uh, legend, um, community man, family man. All of these wonderful things that we've heard over and over again about him. I actually have been raised with the story of Kitty Washington, so it wasn't that much of a surprise to me. But we're happy as a family that you guys continue to shed light on it. So we would like to thank the Rams, as well as Bob Glover, Bob Glover and Sam Hug for all of your guys' attention to our grandfather's story. Can you share with the audience a little bit about what it actually means to see the most powerful league in the nation finally give your grandfather's due? Wow. Um, I would just say the words that come to mind are humble, proud, um, and now the new word is excited. Excited that the rest of the world gets to know the information that we were raised with. And we also, again, in our family, in our household, we have a lot of this information, but it wasn't readily available to everybody else. So again, the thanks to all of the professionals here, all of our loved ones, and definitely for the script writers, the authors, the producers, everybody who makes this story come to life and make it possible. Jonathan, your job, one of your many jobs anyway, is to help get this story out there. Um, first question, maybe make you uncomfortable, but why isn't there a Kitty Washington Day like there is a Jackie Robinson Day? No, I think tonight is, is a big moment, right? And, and it's not the end of the story, but yet a beginning. Right, and I think we can all come together and, and be inspired to be the best version of our, ourselves, right? And I can see the Watts Rams here in the audience, and to have, to have you learn about Kenny Washington in the midst of the barriers that they face every day, and to dream for a greater future. I, I think we're on the rise one day to have a Kenny Washington day, but this is the beginning, right? And Keith was saying to, to tell the world who Kenny Washington is and the impact that he had then and still has today. What are some of the factors that led to Jackie Robinson's name and what he did in Major League Baseball to kind of surpass what Kenny Washington and the other one, other gentlemen did a year before? You know, I, I think part of it, LZ, was that baseball was bigger than that. It, it was. The NFL was big in 1946 and in the, in the 40s, but it wasn't as big as baseball. And for Jackie Robinson to uh, experience that kind of discrimination that kind of overt racism when he played was, was a very big story. Now, it was, it, was, it was less known, I guess, the story of Kenny Washington, and throwing Woody Strode, but not throwing, but Woody Strode was absolutely a part of that, that 1946 season, and then Bill Willis and Marion Motley with Cleveland of the All-American Football Conference. Cleveland still suffered. <laughs> <laughs> So there just wasn't, college football was big, horse racing was big, boxing. So the NFL didn't have the kind of spotlight that it did now, um, but I think as the NFL kind of goes through its reckoning with race, um, Kenny, Kenny's story and Woody and, and Motley and Willis, their stories have kind of come to light more. And I remember you know, talking to Craig early on, Craig Washington early on in the process, and Craig was, was quite open and, and he expressed some frustration. And he said, you know, people have come to us to talk about Kenny and, and to, to do projects about him, but they, they, they go away. And they just, you know, I, 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 and he basically, you know, intimated, I don't know if I can trust you. Well, I, and it's, but I, you had to say, look, I'm not going anywhere. We're telling the story. Keyshawn Johnson and I are telling the story. And I think he, he understood the commitment and once it came out, and the family members were so helpful in telling it, they, they understood. 
And um, you know, the NFL honored all four of those players, Kenny, Kenny Woody, and Marion Motley, and Bill Willis at the Hall of Fame last summer by giving them the Ralph Hay Pioneering Award. It was a big deal. And they received a standing ovation at their marquee event, the Gold Jacket Dinner. Um, and, and you could tell people did not know who they were until they were, they were talking about there. So it's an important story to tell. It needs to be told again and again and again. Um, Sam, whenever a filmmaker is trying to put together a piece of content that is informative, there's this tricky balance between making it also entertaining because it's supposed to be a film. Really love the method of storytelling that you did in this piece. How did that idea come about and do we have any of the participants uh, in the crowd tonight? Yeah, we have uh, DJ and Noah here today. <laughs> 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 Can you stand up? Get some stand on up. up. Stand on up, young man. Stand on up. There he is. We smoked this with us earlier for that to step out. Um, we, that was an idea from the very jump. We wanted to, again, show the legacy and show how the Rams are still continuing to be a leading organization and change. And what they're doing with the Watts Rams was perfect example of that, of many other things. So when we thought, how do we tailor this film to you, animation, involving you, having them in it, like even having the clips, and I, I was hearing the kids like get super hyped when they saw themselves, like that's huge, right? So we wanted to make something so where it wasn't just informative, and you're seeing all these old clips and this black and white where it's not as relatable, but something to where it's bridging the new school as well. So it does seem realistic, and Bridge the gap to show it's important then and important now, and we have to keep going. Which one's going to be the new Black Panther? Have you decided yet? <laughs> <laughs> what, was the hardest, what was the hardest part putting this film together? Team? Anybody? <laughs> I mean, it's been, a, uh, it's been incredible obstacles to overcome. Um, you know, uh, me personally, it's, it's all in the past now. Um, just grateful to have gotten to this moment. Um, again, it's always the hiccups and understandings that come with any type of partnership relationship. We get the ranch, my visuals team, um, Mr. Lynn and Tom Trevor, when we work with the families, um, they've all been caring. And that's what has made this process so easy more so because everyone was so invested in and wanted to see a good project at the end of the day. So Absolutely. The hardest, I'm not sure, but like, you're getting grateful for this one. All right, Jonathan, so you got us all in here. We're all excited. We saw the film. You got some of the actresses that are in the film. I'm assuming this is not the last time the movie is going to be shown. What happens next? We got to tell the world who Kenny Washington is, right? So, so the goal is to continuously, how can we help screen, right? If we're taking it to, to local communities and schools and have a panel discussion as well. I, I think there, there's such importance to have, have a dialogue and how can we connect the audience with the family, with who Kenny is. Kenny is, is that symbol of hope that we all need and in such time of adversity and so many community members are facing those barriers each and every day and to have a symbol of hope now where they can see and learn about and live with beyond the screen and it's what we want to do through the, the dialogue at this time. So are there additional screenings already scheduled and planned and if so are there places in the community where people can go and, and see them that who may not be here? Yeah so we'll be able to Released through our channels, through our website, with how you can have access to the film. February 28th, we're, we're hosting a national speaker series in partnership with a group by EverFi, where we'll be able to have the screen and avail available digitally to all of the 32 NFL club markets. So we'll invite schools, middle and high schools, to be able to see this film. So we're expecting 10 to 12,000 people to, to view the film, but also invite former players, staff members to have that discussion. He said, I think you'll be on that panel as well. Yeah. Sam, I think we're going to be on that too. We're going to have that discussion. We want to tell the world who Kenny is, and he's going to be a hero, not just in Los Angeles, but through the entire state. Where the hell is he get this, that picture in the back of Kenny Washington? Right? He's a running back in the Rams, he made history, but he's throwing the football. And we just had the Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl with two starting black quarterbacks. 
35 years after Doug Williams became the first starting quarterback to win a Super Bowl. You can make the argument that Kenny Washington was the first black quarterback in the modern history of the NFL. Absolutely. In a position where he handled the ball. He, he, he was UCLA's leading passer in 1939, leading rusher as well. And you the first be the quarterback. game that he played with the Rams, Bob Waterfield was a future Hall of Fame quarterback. And Bob Waterfield got hurt. And who went in to play for him was Kenny Washington at quarterback. Yep. He played quarterback in the last preseason game before that opener against Washington. So there are these little snippets that you learn when you look back here and that you don't know that relate to 77 years later to today's game. And it's fascinating. And, and, and he was he was incredible. And even when his career ended, I see Dr. Willard Love here. Willard Love is a local yes. administrator, school administrator, a long time. He was he was uh, running the school when, where Keyshawn Johnson went when he was in high school. <laughs> Give it up, Uncle Willard. Give it up, Uncle Willard. <laughs> but here's who Kenny Washington was. After his career was over, Kenny loved to play with the kids, uh, baseball, football, um, you know, in, in the park. He would take his jacket off, he'd go, he'd show up, and he'd throw the football. Um, and Dr. Love told this story about him playing baseball in the championship of the city. And he's a nervous kid. In, and at bat in a key position, a key situation. And Kenny Washington is standing at the backstop, touching the backstop, and giving encouragement to Willard, to young Willard Love. You can do this, you can do this. And he got a hit in the biggest spot of his life, in his career. And, and Kenny Washington was there to, to urge him on. So as a player, but as a person in the community, that's the kind of impact that he had, it was quiet, but it was impactful. And, and Dr. Love remembers that, what, 70 years later. Final question, and it's reserved for the family. What does this film, what does this recognition mean? Wow, um, it means a culmination of a lot of pressure a lot of dedication, a lot of forthrightness, um, and it means that the world will now be able to know about Kenny the way they know about Jackie, the way they know about Jesse, the way they know about all the other important firsts that may not have set out to be the first, but were challenged with that role and that position, and Ran with it. Is that a plan? Yes, yeah, it was. <laughs> Thank you so much, all four of you, for your time and your wisdom. Sure, Congratulations again, Shannon. <laughs> 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 Kenny wore jersey number 13, and throughout the year, we were able to honor social justice leaders throughout the community, 13 different ones. And tonight, we have an opportunity to select our first playmaker of the year. And Key said the phenomenal work that you're doing at the National College Research Foundation. We are providing this part of the National Grant. This is a continuing work. Very nice. Well, that concludes our evening. Thank